Show it up with Ricky Starks and Chris Jericho. And my God, the crowd. This match was so great. And you know what I liked about it? I don't even know really how they did it. I guess they just had a really great match, but... I was worried about Jericho putting over Ricky Starks because Ricky Starks needed to beat Chris Jericho. But you want it to feel like a meaningful win and not, oh, you beat some guy who's on a skid. He just lost to that uh, jobber, and now he's losing again. But I think they worked it well enough, and they they made Jericho enough of a threat, and they had the great spot where... You know, he's got Ricky in the walls, and Ricky's almost got the ropes, and there's a distraction. They hit Ricky in the face with the bat, and you think, for oh, man, it's over now. And Ricky still fights out and does the whole deal. When it was over, it felt like Ricky had gotten a very meaningful win. He beat Jericho. He beat up the geeks on the outside. He speared him clean in the middle. It wasn't like Jericho was portrayed as a, a loser or somebody who'd lost a step. It was great. And then they beat him down afterwards, and Andretti came out. They beat him down. They put Starks through a table. And I thought this was a, an excellent opening segment. Then we had the disaster that was the Moxley hangman promo. And uh, let me tell you something. Moxley gets a lot of passes, but he's got to stop throwing around the F word. He well, really kind of does. He was in a bad it, mood. He was in a bad mood. <laughs> I'm sure but, Warner Discovery probably was, too. I want to make something clear here, okay? Because I, I heard a lot of, like, what went wrong last night. I heard a lot of people talk about what went wrong. And the thing I kept hearing was Moxley threw the mic, and that's what screwed everything up. And I have to, I, I, I heard it so many times that I'm actually kind of getting hot about it. I was in the building, and there are 8,000 other people that will back me up here. We could not hear Hangman. We could not hear him, okay? This was an issue before Moxley came out. Now, when we could barely hear Hangman, I think I heard like 5% of what he said. Then Moxley came out, and he's, and we can't hear him either. That's when everyone started chanting, we can't hear you. But we were chanting that, not specifically because of Moxley. We couldn't hear Hangman either. So this was an issue from before there was any throwing or anything. Something was up with that mic. So then he came out, and then he throws the mic. And I don't know if he threw the wrong one, but he threw the mic and it made a noise. So I think he threw the one that was working. Then he has the one that's not working. Now he's really mad. And anyway, when we finally could hear him, it was like a good promo. But man, this was a disaster. And uh, I will say that the, the AW production was not the biggest heel of the night. It was actually MJF when he... Uh, and it, here they are. They're coming in. I was there. Brian is right. Could not hear the hangman. I'm telling you, it was a problem from the beginning of the segment, not from throwing mics. I'm sure throwing mics wasn't good for the mic, but still. They did the, uh, the preconditioning deal with MJF, and it was every cheap heat heel thing you've ever heard. But when he made fun of Seattle for screwing up the Super Bowl and then he required them to play the footage, man, you're talking about some PTSD. These people were so angry. They were so mad. And then, you know, as much as I love, you know, great heels and trolling the fans and everything like that, then 45 minutes later, they played the exact same video. So they'd already heard it. They'd already been mad. And that footage came on the screen again, and they got triggered all over again. And I swear to God, there were people, they were standing, ah, ah, they were so mad. The second time. They like, should have gave it to Marshawn. Like, they uh, should have. He's right. You guys are Marks. Gee, many Christmas. Like, it's just a game. <sighs> then we had the acclaimed versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal, AW Tag Team Titles. I want to publicly apologize for everything negative I've said about Jeff Jarrett being back on TV as a wrestler. This guy's been great. And he's not going for the TNT title. He's not going for the AEW title. We have got a giant. We've got a guy that runs around with a pencil. All afternoon, by the way. I was there at 11 a.m. He already had the pencil in his ear. Which I think might have been the only pencil in all of Seattle. Because at one point he had to run for something and the pencil fell. And he like frantically looked for his pencil. And then you've got Jay Lethal, who's a, just a great worker, 
And then you've got this old cowboy, Jeff Jarrett, who's like, he does only what he can do. It all looks good. The people hate him. The heat for this match was incredible. And then they did the old school dusty finish. The heels got the win because of Sanjay. And out comes Seattle's own Aubrey Edwards. And she gets the match restarted. And these people were like, yeah, we could have won the Super Bowl. They're flipping everybody off. (laughs) And then they restarted in the acclaimed win. And they were so happy. Dude, this was awesome. Awesome segment Max, too. Yeah. I had a big fantasy book. The thing about Brian Dallas never happened. He just beat Tony Nese fast. And then they did the long thing with MJF, and they're talking about each other's moms and, and this and that. And the gist of it is, Brian Danielson needs to become the number one contender. So he needs to win every match. It's interesting. He has to win every match until February 8th or something like that. And if he does, then he gets a championship match in March. So I guess, like, in storyline, Tony's like, I need a month to promote or not promote. So we got to make a decision on February 8th. It's fair. So he has to win every match, and if he does, it will be Brian Danielson versus MJF in an Iron Man match. And uh, this MJF bloke, I mean, he's he's going to need to shoot, screw this thing up, because uh, you don't want this match, Max. I'm Terrible. telling you as a man who's had two, I've had two hour-long matches. I love Brian Danielson. I love him. He's a great worker, but it is not a work that he has one speed and he is going to go that one speed for one hour and you're either going to go or you're going to die. And uh, Max better be running, brother. He better be running on that treadmill and you need to put it on the incline and you need to do intervals and you do at least like two hours a day every day. I know it's fake, but just trust me on this one. He's the old school, right? That's what he talks about. That's who he's been blessed by. That's who he's the throwback to. He's got to live up to it in the ring. Got the 60-minute man. He's the new the new version of that, right? Well, he's, here's his chance to prove it. And the understated brilliance of Brian Danielson just volleying things back to MJF. And, and thing... MJF needs to show humility sometimes in situations. He can't, sometimes he's too one speed. What we've seen from him with Ricky Starks, what we're seeing with Brian Danielson is him against people that are volleying back and he's letting him do it and he's letting it go. And I thought Danielson was brilliant. You know, hey, Max, you know, I made the mom joke and everything, but you know what? I hate you. And I'm going to kick your your damn head in. And I thought that promo, especially the end of it, selling into the commercial, I thought that was great. This guy here goes, stop projecting, Brian. Just because you can't doesn't mean MJF can't. Listen, Dark Man 05. Maxie, uh, Brian. Of me, Max, and you, one of us has done two one-hour matches. So I don't want to hear about it. Oh. Yeah, you heard me. Yeah. MJF out there talking about dirt sheet writers never been in the ring. You know what, Max? Of the two of us, one of us, one of us has had two one-hour matches, and one of us hasn't. Did you win them? Won one of them. I didn't win the one with Tim Flowers. Yeah. Oh. Because he was the promoter. Yeah, anyway. That's how it works. Yeah, it was, it was fake. The other one was real. Swerve Strickland and A.R. Fox. The crowd was tired after that MJF promo with, with Danielson, so... They had a they had a fun match and everything like that, but uh, it was it was this was very like a WWE match where they sit there quietly, and it's like they don't care. But then a cool spot happens and they erupt into this is awesome chance. Then they sit there again and then some cool happens like holy you know what? And at the end, Swerve got the win and you know it was it was a good match. But I think what's most notable is this bro, this Swerve. Man, this guy came off as a big deal. So they need to go with this guy because he's great. Oh, can they listen to Seattle, though? I mean, really? Yeah. FTR, uh, this thing was just weird. The Guns did a uh, a funeral for FTR, and, you know, they didn't announce to the audience that they were in Japan. They just played their music, and then they never came out. I presume most people knew they worked the Dome, but if you didn't, you were like, man, what cowards. Then we no, had uh, they they played it up as if they knew they weren't in that building at all. They brought out the easel with the pictures on it and everything. And I guess this is a good way to announce that FTR might take a couple weeks off to heal up from some of the injuries and the travel and all that sort of stuff. Since the gun said they you would never see them in uh, AEW again. And we had Jade Cargill and Red Velvet against Sky Blue and Kira Hogan. 
They they thought that Jade was a star, and that's all I can say that was good about this match. The wrestling was not very good. I have no idea why Red Velvet is teaming with Jade after literally breaking up twice prior to this. Finally, she walks out on her, and then Jade just turns around, and she just beats both of these women by herself, which leads to them announcing Jade will be defending the title against Kira Hogan, one of the two geek baby faces in this match. At Battle of the Bells, this did not work at all for How me. How did Layla Gray look? But the main event, Darby Allen, Samoa Joe, this little bell ringer, he went in there and he got his bell rung. Let me tell you. Got beaten. But you know what? I got to tell you one thing. I was scared to death when he took that urinage on the, uh, the steps and everything. But honestly, other than that, this was like a thousand times safer than the last match he did with Samoa Joe. <laughs> That last match he had with Joe, I as God is my witness, if they would have just done an MMA fight, it would have turned out way better for Darby. Because this pro wrestling match, dude, I mean, I don't think he's ever been, like, falling that bad on a half pipe. So anyway, they do the whole thing. He sells his knee. Joe's a great heel. And then finally... Joe gets run headfirst into the buckle. Darby hits that coffin drop off the one corner. He hits the coffin drop off the other corner. He gets the pin. And for that guy that argued that Darby should not win this title in his hometown, you need to publicly apologize to me because you could not have been more wrong. Dummy. God, this place went nuts. And they had the confetti and they're going crazy. And then Darby cuts his promo afterwards, and he's putting over Nick Wayne, and he's putting over the city of Seattle, and talking about how he can never give up, and this and that. Dude, one of the best live shows I ever went to, like a TV taping. I've been to better pay-per-views, but as far as the TV taping, unbelievable. The hey. WWE legendary hey, joke, joke book. book. Why do WWE superstars' fingers hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Why Grin. were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry? Erkerlund? <laughs> Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. Yep. No. No. I mean, no. <laughs> no, that is the answer. <laughs> Glamazon. That's what I said! <laughs> you said Gramazon. No, I said Glamazon. <laughs> oh, there should be a Gramazon. <laughs> yeah, Gramazon, actually. You get, like, like, puppy you get it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.